We're going to stay with this theme now for our next presentation. Kirsty Richards is a vet with Sunport Group, and she's going to talk through how she's been working with government on a number of projects, including African swine fever, to make sure that policy decisions are practical in their application. Welcome, Kirsty. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Kirsty. I'm a veterinarian with the Sunport Group, um, representing Sunport here today. We have four processing facilities and just under 50 farms across uh, New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia, and Victoria, um, housing just under or around about 600,000 pigs. So I'm here today to present uh, what we think of as a success story, success story in terms of partnering with government over the last two years in the African swine fever space. So I'll just give you some context of where we were this time two years ago. Uh, African swine fever had just arrived in Timor-Leste. So I guess we'd been watching this disease move its way across Europe and Asia and very suddenly it was right, literally right on our doorstep. Uh, the pork industry has been engaged in biosecurity for a long time, so that's not a new space for us to be playing in. But at that time, we certainly had little to no engagement with uh, biosecurity and biosecurity Queensland, sorry, and uh, neither did we have much with any of the other jurisdictions. We, as a business, were largely not a part of the emergency disease conversation, and it certainly felt at the time that this was something that was happening to us rather than with us. Uh, we were worried. We felt disconnected, and I think it's fair to say government probably felt the same in terms of their relationship with the pork industry. And uh, at that time, there was certainly quite a chasm between industry and uh, and and government. So what happened? Um, there was flags went up both on behalf of both industry and government. We all sort of went into a slight panic mode. There was meetings. There was panels formed. There was committees formed. There were more meetings. Um, certainly felt for a while there as though we were maybe going around in circles. And um, I think without intending to, we, we often fell over each other in those, those first um, sort of phases a couple of years ago. But we had some really productive outcomes and where that all led to was a series of exercises, the formation of task forces and working groups and funding at all levels of government and, and in industry. And where that's led us over the last two years is to be able to really uh, refine and review, sorry, and refine policy, um, which which has allowed position us better in terms of decision making. It's allowed us to really look closely at our operational preparedness because you can have any policy you want, but if you can't operationalise it, it's it's it is only just a policy. It's allowed us to take a really good look at resourcing and capacity. Can we actually do the things we would need to do if we needed to launch a response? And it's again brought to the fore uh, the, the, the importance of communication. Now I'd highlight that this partnership over the last two years has not just bet been between government and industry. Um, I've certainly seen it between government and government and between industry in itself. So that, that partnership piece speaks to the relationships between all stakeholders. It's been an absolute unprecedented shift in paradigm from, from our perspective. Um, and just to move on from there and show some of the things that we've done over the last couple of years in collaboration with government. Um, at the very top, we've had a cost benefit analysis that's been um, funded by the federal government that's had heavy, heavy input from, from industry and from government. So I'm, I'm not talking tokenistic type input, I'm talking about days and days where people from industry have sat down and outlined how industry works and, and same from the government perspective. What we now have is a cost benefit tool that really allows us to make um, good decisions if we ever did need to make a response. We didn't have that capacity two years ago. We have the AusVet Plan National um, Response Strategy. If I can give you an example of where we were sitting two years ago in terms of this strategy, if you have a look at the slide in front of you, and I just draw your attention to the number of words prohibited in those box, inside that red box. Now, this is the movements matrix for semen, which for context, um, for those not in the pig industry here, we move semen two to three times a week. It needs to come to farm fresh. If we aren't able to breed our sows in just over three months, we don't have piglets. And just after six months uh, beyond that, we don't have pork on tables. So this is where we were two years ago. We were unable to move semen in the case of an outbreak. And with the benefit of some very robust discussions between industry and government. Uh, we're now in a position where we can now move semen uh, in the case of an outbreak. And I would um, 
emphasise that this hasn't come at the expense of outcomes for either industry or government. So we still have our disease control outcomes accounted for, but we've been able to bring into the picture that business continuity piece for industry, which has been terribly important. Uh, another big um, partnership between industry and government has been in the review of evaluation compensation um, scheme in the case of an emergency disease response. This would be a huge potential sticking point if we were to have a disease, um, an African swine fever outbreak. We have had a very strong collaboration between industry and government where we've actually sat down. We've come to an agreement around what this compensation should look like. It's fair, it's equitable, it's not excessive. Um, but it has been agreed by industry, it has been agreed by government, we all know where we stand should we ever need to realise this. Now stepping it down and starting to, to move to that bit where policy turns into operation, uh, we've had the exercise Razorback running nationally for the last 18 months. Now we, this has been a tremendous series of activities, it's five different activities with over 100 people involved. Just looking at that screen in front of you, we have uh, people from America, we've got people from Canada, we've got people from Ireland, we have transport operators from um, Australia, we've got abattoir operators, we've got producers, we've got government, we have the whole spectrum of um, uh, expertise at all levels of government and industry and we've been looking both at pressure testing policy and also looking at our operational preparedness. So we've been looking at things like our capacity to actually mass destroy animals if we needed to, does the policy hold up and how would we do it if we needed to? What would it look like if we had an export abattoir processing 95% of the pigs in any given state, unable to process pigs and movement controls applied? So with this group of people, we've been able to really test the policy and come out the other end with both better policy and with some gaps identified that we now know we need to fill. So we've had some um, excellent government industry collaborations at a really practical level, taking it that step down again, where, for example, in South Australia, we have a collaboration where the two export abattoirs down there are now in financial collaboration with both government and the pig producers, uh, building truck washes at their two abattoirs. So this has been a massive operational effort. Um, we've had the development of pig biosecurity or pork industry biosecurity management planning tools that are aimed at not only the commercial producers, but um, everyone down to the person that just keeps pigs, um, but has no idea about biosecurity. So translating those sort of policy piece down to this really operational practical stuff for producers and pig owners. We've had some fantastic interactions in Queensland where we've had biosecurity Queensland out to our farms. Now what that allows um, the government people to do is to really start to think about if I had to do, you know, if I had to run an infected premise, what would it look like? Um, and to learn, take themselves back, learn more about the pig industry, engage with pig producers, um, had some fantastic exercises there. Um, on the left, you can see we've taken it right down to ground level, uh, reteaching people how to collect samples, for example, on the right, it's been reciprocated where we've had government teaching industry um, and teaching our producers how this policy would play out. So we've got this really collaborative sharing of information from both sides. Um, and then there's been, from an industry perspective, it's not just about government doing things. So we've recognised our responsibilities. And one of the things amongst others we've done is taken our industry quality systems program, which already had 17 biosecurity standards. Um, and we've beefed up those biosecurity standards, recognising that at the end of the day, Biosecurity is ultimately our responsibility as pig producers to, to, to be able to demonstrate. Uh, and the other really important piece that we've spent the last year, two years doing is telling our story. No one tells your story like you do. No one can speak to the pig industry, businesses and supply chain, our animals, our systems capability, and really importantly, our families and communities like we do. And it's totally unreasonable to expect a government to stay up to scratch with every industry that it's trying to deal with if we're not prepared to extend our hand and help with that awareness and education. So where are we after two years of all of these activities? I think it's fair to say that both um, some pork industry and all of the governments um, have been extremely busy. Uh, African swine fever continues to draw closer. It's now in uh, Papua New Guinea, so it really is right on our borders. But we now have far more robust policy. We've stress tested it, we understand it, it's been refined. 
We are far better operationally prepared. Um, we have gaps that we've identified that we're working on and we're also working on capacity. That chasm with government is, is gone. We now have relationships, we have respect, we have communication, we have phone numbers in our phones if we should ever need to call them and that works both way for both industry and government. Within industry, we're seeing an unprecedented level of cohesion and collaboration, and I'm seeing the same between governments. So it's not just that industry government piece, it's the within industry and within government collaboration that we're also seeing. We're still worried, um, but we know we're all in this together. We're working together to solve this problem. Um, and I think what we've done in the pig industry certainly presents a precedent for other diseases and other industries. My take home for government, um, those from government that are here today is that industry buy-in comes from industry involvement. The best way to work with the industry is to work with them rather than trying to do things to them. The involvement of industry must always be meaningful and not box ticking. And I think it's important to recognise that industry brings to the table not only expertise, but they bring resources that you can tap into. For the industry people, I think there's some really important take homes. We need to step up. We need to take responsibility. We need to lead. We can't expect the government's going to do this all for us. It's not always easy. It can get frustrating, um, but we do have strengths. We do have expertise. And importantly for industry, in amongst everything else we have to do in terms of day-to-day -day farming, we absolutely need to prioritise this contingency planning process and the relationships that come with us. So my super summary is in this little circle, which is we absolutely have to work together. And by doing that for the last two years, we've really uh, changed the face of pork industry um, EAD preparedness. So thank you. Wow, Kirsty, what a fantastic presentation and such a great example across all of the themes that we've been talking about in the Partners Forum so far. I'm sure all of you could look back over Kirsty's presentation and see clarity of purpose and objectives, partners de demonstrating mutual trust and respect, clarity of roles and responsibilities, empowering people to act and take responsibility, partnership collaboration to achieve goals. I heard all of those things in that presentation and it was, it was um, fantastic to hear it from you, Kirsty. so thank you so much. Now,